I, I think it's actually a great question because it kind of regroups all, everything we've been talking about until now. I think, uh, for example, I, I think uh, the issue of technology is a challenge. That, as Alfonso said, there's this idea on the part of municipal governments in the south, around the world, the quote unquote south, that um, you know that high tech solutions are the way to go. They want to do what what the, the Danes are doing and the Japanese, but you know. We're in a very different context in terms of waste composition, in terms of uh, the, the employment situation and, and, and costs. So, uh, so I would say in general, and I saw there was another question that hasn't been asked yet, yet about, about technology, and I would basically say that, in, that as a general rule, you want to go for low technology solutions when you can. Low cost, low technology, to the extent possible. Um, one of the reasons why waste picking works is because it's very low investment. And if you start raising the cost, you, you get to systems that only work if you have a high subsidy, which is not possible in a lot of places. So uh, that's one of the issues that came up. Came up. That's a challenge. I think that uh, the misconception on the part of governments and publics that waste pickers are, you know, a bunch of drug addicts and criminals that you could never imagine working with. This is something that that we we see disappearing when you actually do the work, and they start to actually meet the waste pickers. Uh, to, I see we have two minutes, but again, you know, breaking down these misconceptions is important. Uh, and then, well, I mean, there are problems all around because, I, I don't want to say problems, but there are challenges. It, it's exciting work, but there are challenges, and, and one of them is that, you know, it's how do you integrate an informal sector that, that is by nature informal and, and into a formal sector? And there's a whole mystery around that. And there, unfortunately, we're out of time, but there have been some very interesting examples of how you can actually do that. Yeah, well, we have, I will add to, but we need examples. We need example examples of integration, physical, economical, and social. And we are doing that in Mexico. And uh, in Mexico, at least in the North countries, uh, all the issue is are the leaders, you know. They are what is called leaders and they don't want to change. These guys who have control, money, and they, they, they are usually a big obstacle in doing projects with these best speakers, you know. Yes. In Mexico, okay. we have strong leaders in the Atlantis, but at the States, they, they are no leaders at all. So um, I do think we need to cre be much more creative and understand that in order to improve the working conditions of the informal sector and in order to increase the recycling rates, both organic as needs to go through high technological solutions. We need to go through systemic approach, improving working conditions, and sometimes that is just a roof and, uh, and a proper place to sit and to have dinner and, and to have a bathroom. It doesn't necessarily need to be a high-tech, super expensive centralized solution. I do think that we need to change our mindset and understand that the context in Latin America is labor intensive and therefore, because we are not living in a world full of employment, unfortunately, we need to at least take care of the ones that we have and of course the conditions are really bad and I know them and we all know them uh, very well, so we need to move to... Yeah,